Lord. Father God, we just come to you humbly, Lord, and we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this time that you bestowed upon us to be able to um, just uh, come together to hear your word, Lord, and um, to receive from you what you want from us, Father God, or what you want us to receive of your word. Lord, I thank you for um, our friends and um, the people who listen, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you would give us all ears to hear your truth, Father. I pray, Lord, that you would open up our ears and our hearts to receive from you um, going forward um, what you went through, Father, when you died on the cross for us, Lord. Lord, I, I just lift up um, Danny's friend Kirby to you still, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that for the praise report that he'll be getting out tomorrow. We thank you, Amen. Lord. They only took one toe, Father God, when they said two. Amen. Lord, I just pray, Father God, that you would just continue to use this for your glory, Lord. Lord, that you would just um, continue to give him peace, Father God. And Lord, that you would continue to draw him close to you, Father. Yes, yes. Lord, I pray Father, that, your, um, that your, your presence would just be with him, Lord, and that you would just minister to him in whatever ways that he needs, Father God, spiritually, emotionally. And physically, Lord God, that you would touch him from the top of his head to the tips of his toes, Lord. Thanks. And Father God, I just, um, I lift up our our grandbabies to you, Father God, our families. Yes. Lord, each of our loved ones and our family and our friends, Father God, I pray <clears throat> around each and every one of them, Lord. I pray, yes. Father God, that you would, um, that you would draw those that don't know you close to you, Father God, by your Holy Spirit, Lord. And Lord, that you would remove the blinders from the eyes that of those who are, are blind to your truth, Father. Soften our hearts tonight, Lord. And ask that you would um, give John the words to speak, Lord, to deliver your truth, Lord, in a way that we understand, Lord, and that you would open up with discernment for us, Father God. We just thank you for thank all you, these Father. awesome things, Lord, um, that you just continue to be with us tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Well, sure. yeah. So this is going to be, uh, so last week, uh, as you guys know, we talked about the, um, the denial where Peter, Peter denies um, Jesus three times. Mm -hmm. um, basically, we finished up the, the upper room discourse, and then uh, basically he's walked through the Garden of Gethsemane, and this is kind of where you have uh, Peter following Jesus, but kind of at a distance, like we do sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked a lot about that, and I don't have time to go on to too much of last week. Uh, we're now at the last, just the last couple of hours of Jesus's life, mm -hmm. you know, chapter 19. So, um, this chapter, I'm going to go ahead and read a few verses because every single verse in here is going to be a note taker. Mm. So I'm going to read a few yeah. verses or, or let Alana read a few verses, maybe down to verse uh, five, right. Right, verses one through five. And we're going to talk about it. So uh, I hope you all as excited as I am about tonight because there will be some good information come out. So okay. 19.1. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then Jesus then came forth, then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. Okay. Anybody have anything they want to say about what we just read? Any thoughts? Just going to put it out there. Anybody well, have I'm, any nuggets, anything that they want to mention about that? We well, I, I mean, I, just, just my observation of, of this particular chapter uh, when it comes to power. I can barely hear you, Danny. Can you hear me? Testing, one, two. Yeah. Testing. Yeah. Can you hear me? Might have been my, yes. Okay. Yeah, what I noted, uh, just, you know, the first part of this about Pilate. I mean, Pilate had some reservations. He, he didn't want to proceed forward with, um, with uh, you know, with, with the punishment 
um, upon Jesus, uh, you know, and that could have been because of his what what his wife had 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 you know had relayed to him about the dream that she had, you know. But so he had some reluctancy to push Jesus, for, you know, push Jesus out there for the people. He wanted he really in his heart he wanted them to let him go. He wanted to let him go. But I, I think, uh, yeah, he wanted to let him go. But uh, I think there was some pride that got in the way um, uh, with him as well when it came to the people, because now he's he's looking at pleasing the people versus uh, doing the right things. And stuff, so, I think this is a picture, and I think it's good that you brought this up um, because this is a big part of what we what we researched. I think we as Christians today do that very thing we're in a position of authority yeah out of us and it's easy when there's a little pressure from the worldly from the world out there yeah we can tend to even though we get advice from our wife mm -hmm. and um uh from god mm -hmm. when when we're put under pressure when when somebody squeezes the orange orange juice isn't what comes out right you know, yeah it's easy to, to be in a position of authority um with jesus and, and be afraid to talk about it too much. Um, so do you guys know uh, the backstory generally about why Pilate was, so So he, um, three different times, he tried to actually let Jesus off. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we'll kind of start with this. There were So he, he was in kind of uh, hot water with Caesar. Um, which Caesar was it? Do you remember? Um, I made a note here. Was it Augustus? No, it was Caesar. I made my notes right here. Uh, actually, let me see that book. He was in uh, not cahoots, but he was in he was in hot water with Caesar. He was walking a fine line. Yeah, and for three different reasons, he was afraid to to let this. I'll tell you what happened. So um, I have my notes here. I thought I had it memorized, but there were three different things he did. So okay, so Caesar. Um, I forget Caesar which Caesar it was. Um, it's, it's on here too. Anyway, while she's looking it up, Julius Caesar. No, 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 no. Uh, Emperor oh. was it Rome? Tiberius was it Tiberius? Not that's not. Um, one second. I forget the Caesar it was, but anyway, the emperor. Basically, there was there was three main reasons Pilate was already in trouble with the emperor of Rome. Number one, he had been in office about five years at this point. Okay. And so when they moved in, the soldiers had these staffs on each one of them had like this, you know, picture and I had a picture of Caesar. OK, mm -hmm. so when he, when he first came into office, basically, he you know, he was in a during a Jewish area. Right. So they have their own their own. Um, what do you call it? Um, it was Tiberius. Castle. Yeah. Tiberius. Caesar Tiberius, the emperor of Rome. So when when Pilate came in. Uh, with his soldiers in an area that's a Jewish area, keep in mind, you have to remember the second commandment says not, not to uh, pray to, a, you know, not to have an idol to one of the earth or heaven or earth. You're not supposed to have images. And so the Jewish people were very, the Jewish hier hierarchy were very strict about this. So when Pilate came into office, um, he, his people were holding these staves that had Caesar's head on it, trying to honor Caesar, but the Jews didn't like that very much. And so mm -hmm. Pilate, out on the beach of Caesarea and so they 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 were not happy and they went to his property a whole bunch of them like they they stormed so they out to, a riot, they started an insurrection a riot and they went out to his property and said look we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna have this and so he's like no no we're, um how what was the rest of the story um, so so yeah pilot so pilot basically had pilot invited uh Commanded, in other words, invited them to the amphitheater in Rome. They had, they were gathered there, and he gathered them, and he threatened them. He had his, he had his, his Roman guards basically surround them and storm them, dress up like Jewish people, some of them, and storm in and threaten them and force them to follow. He said, "Look, if you guys, if you guys don't, you know, do what we say, we're going to cut your head off." So the Jewish leaders they threw were basically, them. were basically like take our head off because we're not we'd rather die than than break our life. and so word of that got back in a nutshell all the way back to rome 
Mm. And Caesar heard about it. So that was, so that was strike one. Strike two was they had, I think this was two, they had shields made. Uh, I don't know if this is strike two or no, three. Strike two was, so, uh, what's his name? Pon Pontus, no. Pontius Pont Pilate was Pontius Pilate, Pilate wanted to have water brought into oh, yeah, yeah. Jerusalem. And have an part, aqueduct built. And, and how he went about it to fund it is he took money from the temple. the, the temple funds and the Jews were furious about it. So they, uh, again, because of wrote, all the deaths of the lambs and all the, they were going through extra water and just regular water supply. He felt like he needed, they were short of money and then what happened? So that caused a big insurrection and, and word got back to, to Caesar, Caesar again. about that. So he was in trouble that time. And the third time had to do with. Pilate said, okay, this time they're going to go inside their temple. It was called uh, the, the, where the soldiers stayed. It was, um, I don't know what my note is on this. Uh, the Antonia Fortress, that's where they hung out. That's where you get that royal robe, that military robe that Jesus wore. could have been reddish like purple. That was, mm -hmm. that was basically like a military robe from one of the soldiers. So that's from the Antonius Fortress, which is within the area, but it's the kind of the temple, like the area that the Roman soldiers would gather, like the embassy, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so third, third offense, uh, Pilate's like, fine, we're going to, they basically had shields with Caesar on it, saying honor Caesar and all that. And they kept it inside their fortress so the Jewish people wouldn't see it. It wasn't out in the public. Well, it turns out somebody got wind of that. And you know who they went and told? Mm. Caesar. And then you have this whole Jesus thing happening here. So now you have, um, I had notes, but it's all here. So basically, by this time, Pilate has been in office five years, and he has done made Caesar very mad. So here's the dilemma before I read more of this. The dilemma is you have these Jewish leaders. They, they, won't, they won't break the law, even though they do it all the time by making their own rules. Mm -hmm. This this area, remember, Pilate lives out by the beach, but where he would camp out for Passover was in a castle-like structure called the Petro uh, Pet um, Petronium. It's the, the castle at the, basically mm -hmm. near the temple. And so he would hang out in there, and, you know, he was, even though he's Spanish, he was considered Roman, so a Gentile. So he would, so they'd look over, like we talked about last week, the Passover, because there were so many people there. So keep it in mind, Caesar's already mad at him. He's not happy with the Pilate. So now you have this whole thing where the Jew, the Jewish leaders are coming there saying, look, we want this. We're not going to kill. We know what the scriptures say. We can't. So we're not going to stone him. Basically, it would have been against the law. So we want you guys to use your, you know, we want you guys to do it. But yet the Jewish leaders, because of their not wanting to get um, defiled, they didn't want to go inside the chambers of Pilate to get him to do it because he was a Gentile. But yet they wanted Pilate to break the law by uh, crucifying Jesus, basically. So Pilate and Caesar are not good. And then mm -hmm. Pilate and the Jewish leaders are not good. And we're going we're gonna to read here where they're like, man, you're going to upset Caesar if you don't judge this man for uh, saying oh, he's God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but yet the chief, which we'll read, but yet the chief priest who's saying this hates Caesar because mm -hmm. that's why they can't run their own country, basically. <clears throat> and so had to say that oh man you're gonna upset caesar keep in mind Pilate had a roman greek background like mythology and ancient gods so he was very like mystic like if you said that kind of stuff it'd freak him out especially when his wife said she got a dream so you have Pilate in this story right here really caught in the middle i believe he doesn't and we're going to find out a few verses in he doesn't think jesus is guilty number one right and yeah I believe he also believes that he might be God. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now he has these Jewish people going to go to Caesar if they don't kill him. So now he's caught in the middle and his wife's upset. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to do anything he can to not kill him. And so there's this trial that happens uh, for that purpose. So as we read um, verse one, I'm going to read it again. No, no. Um, then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. Now the guys that did this, oh, hold on. Haley. Oh, Zach. Zach. So this, this, I know this is only a couple of verses in, but this is going to be most of our time tonight. And I hope you guys don't mind. I want to invest in just these first few verses. What's up, Mr. Zach? 
player for the audio. What's up, Zach? Yo, what's going on with you? <laughs> what up, Zach? <laughs> what up? Nice to have you, man. Rob, no, sorry I'm late. I just got through cooking. It's all good. And so, um, welcome to the group. I'm going to keep going if that's cool. It's um, good. It's good. We're only going in 22 verses, so we're going to dedicate a whole lot of time to a couple of verses. And I'm telling you guys, right here, <laughs> third time I'm going to read it since Zach showed up. Then Pilate, verse one, then, therefore took Jesus and scourged him. Now the guys were, these guys were, these Romans, they perfected crucifixion, right? Oh, I got boogie, boogie. No. no. Oh. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> these, are, these guys were professional. This is all they did. They were called Roman lictors, L-I-C-T-O-R-S. That was their job. They're the ones that would have the scourging tool and they would, they scourge Jesus. Typically a scourging, this is where we're going to, we're going to, I want to unfold this a little bit. Um, the tool is called cat of nine tails. Sometimes it had three straps of leather, leather typically. Uh, but you've heard cat of nine tails. It's called, a, it's a whip or a scourge mm -hmm. or a flagellum or a flagrum, all of those, right? And normally the scourging tool, like I said, I have two Roman men, probably strong men. This is all they did. And usually, uh, you see some videos where it's a long whip, but typically if you study and research the scourge, scourging tool, it had a roughly a 12 inch wooden pole, give or take maybe a reed or a stick. And <clears throat> it had three to nine chunks of leather, anywhere from uh, 12 to 19 inches long, somewhere generally in that area. And usually you'd have on the end of it, um, oh, where is it? Yeah, over here, chunks of metal, um, metal wiring, um, a bone, glass, and you would see, and by the way, next week, when we go on to verses 23 to 42, the actual crucifix, mm -hmm. we're going to have, we're going to, we're going to show you this and we'll have this thing done for you guys, but they would use something to this effect. We actually made these. Mm -hmm. um, on the end. Yeah. On the end, this is a leather strap and obviously they didn't have rivets, I'm sure. So they use the leather or something to this effect. If you research it, and they'd have metal, probably not as nicely done lead here, but this would be a long strap. And we'll show you, I have some pictures tonight I'll show you about right in here. If you had nine of these, they would hook them together with a big looping leather thing just to kind of control them. Mm. And they'd be different lengths. And this would either be bone and glass and lead. And so mm. what would happen is, I'm going to get back to the guys doing the scourging. They were called lictors. And we have Haley coming in. One second, guys. Haley. I'll wait for her to pop up. Suicide awareness. I like that. It's good. Um, we'll wait for her one second here. You said how many soldiers would do the scourging? About two <laughs> Roman soldiers to the three. Typically, two was a was a was a very common thing. Sometimes one. But it would be hard for more than two because there might be they, they would get hurt. Mm -hmm. Right. So they would take turns. Yeah, they would alter. And what a scourging normally was, one second, let me take this over here. Let me get where's my pictures? I want to have this available. Um one second, guys. Sorry about that. Um, well, I have some pictures here. I have to find them. As we say, <laughs> Um, I don't know where they went. Anyway, yeah, so normally they have two Roman soldiers called lictors, and they would alternate, uh, you know, Gosh, roughly at a 45 degree angle, some kind of an upward. This is a typical scourging. Uh, they would they would do it 39 times. Some people say 40, a couple of different rumors. They some believe, you know, it was a way of offering mercy. Others say because they break the law, if they went over 40. So they didn't want to break the law in that way. Um, but the typical understanding is 39 swings and it'd be kind of an upward diagonal. And so just like if there's two men with a sledgehammer hitting a post in the ground, they'd alternate mm. doing this over and over. And what they would do is this is just one, one strap that we made. And why do you see this thing put together? What they would do is they would tie you on a pole, but I want to bring my picture up. 
uh, an actual poll that was uh, that is a real one. Um, where does this say my my photos? I cannot find it. I'm not sure what happened here. Anyway, I'm going to share. Um, it's just throwing me for a loop here. So the score the scourging had One three second. purposes. It was used to punish prisoners and to gain confessions of crimes from prisoners. Mm. Um, in the case of crucifixion, scourging was used to weaken the victim so he would die more quickly on the cross. And Pilate had hoped that this punishment of Jesus would satisfy the crowd, neither then as part of the capital punishment nor in order to elicit the truth, but in the ill-judged hope that this minor punishment might satisfy the Jews, Pilate ordered the scourging. That's good. Sorry, I didn't, I don't know where my notes went here, my pictures. Well, I wouldn't waste too much time. Yeah, I won't. So, <clears throat> I have a question then. Um, so how often would they um, scourge someone prior to crucifixion and how long would they usually last great question i have some information for you right here um okay. before we read anymore so uh first thing is um i kind of go backwards you have these two roman soldiers and they do this over and over and over and i'll explain some of the damage that happens from that but there was three types or three reasons for scourging okay they had, uh, they had like three levels, Jesus getting the worst, the third one. The first, the first form of scourging, uh, it was leather tongs, a wooden handle, jagged metal balls with bone, uh, lamp sheet bone. They were tied to a pillar <clears throat> just enough they could put their hands up and they couldn't keep their balance kind of on their tippy toes. They'd kind of wobble so they couldn't get away from it. Okay. And so I don't forget to tell you guys this. Remember when they when they hit him in the face and some of the other chapters go into more detail about it, they punched him, they smote him. We're going to mm -hmm. read just, they smote him here. So you're not going to get graphic details. There was a game. I didn't forget your question, Alicia. There was a game where Roman soldiers, they were bored. So what they do is they cover your head and they would take turns punching you in the face. And the name mm -hmm. that, that was actually a name for that, it was called the game of hot hands. Mm -hmm. And game of over hot hands odd hands what, hot hands and odd they would hands. it was huh it was something fun where they would do it to pass the time they would they would punch you in the face and you wouldn't know and they say hey tell me you remember he says tell me prophet which one of us did it remember right. that whole scene yep well, it, was, it was a game it was, it was a funny thing it was it was romans loved the whole process of crucifixion um not to get too much off target, the Persians invented it around three to 400 BC, long before that, because the Persians, I know I'm jumping from scourging to crucifixion, forgive me for that. Um, the Persians were very mother earth and they, did, they thought it would be defiling the ground to do stoning, to do anything on the ground. So long before this, they liked the idea of elevating somebody and doing it that way. And so the Romans basically adopted this over the years and, and the Roman lictors, um the romans they became experts at it and so that's where that whole thing came from um but we were sorry i'm jumping around forgive me you were asking about the scourging um the types of scourging right right um, and how long how long people lasted comparatively so, no. jesus and and them going how many after a scourge was even able to make it many minutes to uh, to even to the cross right most people most people <laughs> just after a level one scourging would die wow several hours after not long after because i'm going to give you the second form before i go into the the actual details um that was for people that were they were just kind of trying to send you a message that i want you to tell her what the, the roman law was first the number 39 40. But yeah, but remember they did 39 because they right. thought they didn't want to break the Roman law. So, yeah. She might want to know that part. Oh, I told her. Did you guys get that? Yeah. 39? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So, 
So man, there's so much to say here. So the first form, uh, the name for the first form of scourging, I don't have the exact spelling. It's a Latin word, fusagatio, fusagatio. Mm. And that's basically trying to get your attention. They're not trying to kill you and they let you go. It's, it's not the best. It? Good question. I'm struggling to find the spelling, but it's called fusagatio. You'll have to do that research on your own because I, I, I didn't find yeah. the right spelling. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's a Latin word. Remember, yeah. they're in Rome, so Latin, Latin was their yeah. ceremonial language. Mm -hmm. um, like when they read the rites in the Catholic Church, you're hearing, you know, those, the Latin language. Mm -hmm. The Latin ball gate, which is where we get uh, our Bible, one of our Bibles. Um, so anyway, um, the second form of scourging, the second level, this was called the flagellatio or flagellatio or f-l-a-g-i-l-a-t-i-o is what i found the fla flagellatio that's for the more serious crimes okay so that was a lot more intense people would often die from that just from the blood loss mm -hmm. okay and so we're going to talk about the kind of the kind of injuries that they went through in just a second and here's level three this is what jesus went through this is called the verberatio, like verb, verberatio, it's a Latin word. This is for, for capital crimes. Obviously, um, somebody that's an insurrectionist who was kicked out of the synagogue might get level one, level two, but somebody like Jesus, they said that he was believes he's God. That's obviously what they consider blasphemy. That's a capital punishment. Mm -hmm. And so, so what was the um, third one called? 39 to 40 lash, it depends on who you talk to. Um, the idea of that scourging was to weaken the victim, usually kill them. Um, it was designed, a lot of times they'd have more than one person getting scourged. And it was always about the person on the middle pole or in the cross in that sense, the person in the center, because they do more than one crucifixion or scourging at a time. <laughs> but the person in the middle was always the one they wanted to humiliate the most. He was the focal point. The and so, in the middle, is it coming out? Was always the one they wanted Sorry, to guys. That's right. She was a focal um, So, the idea of. <laughs> one second, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, the idea of the third one is to get somebody to confess. They're not trying to just mess with you, they want to get information from you. And I think that's interesting because. The only information they got from Jesus at the cross that mattered was forgive them for they know not what they do. He didn't give me any information. A lot of mm -hmm. times when we're put under pressure, we'll, we'll talk, we'll complain. He didn't. Hey, John. So, yeah, can't hear what you. Was that, uh, what was that third form of scourging called? Somebody else say something. Verbigadio. Verbigadio. That's my audio. What's going on here? Say something. Verbigatio. There we go. There, something's going on with my audio. Yeah, that's the third one. Verbigatio. That's Latin. Mm -hmm. And what was your question? I couldn't hear you before, Zach. Uh, she just answered my question. I was just asking the third oh, okay. kind of scourging. Yeah, and so the first one's to mess with somebody. The second one, you're you're in some trouble. You know, chances are they won't die from it but they'll be in bad shape and probably eventually die later because of the infection. The third one, they're trying to get you to talk and they're trying to wear you out. They want to make you a public spectacle. And we're going to talk about the cross thing here soon. They're trying to make a, and this is usually done very public in the street. Matter of fact, it's likely right at the end of the road of Damascus, right out at the very end, out in the street. Uh, even when you think about Jesus going to the cross, I told you guys last week that Passover was done in, in the Temple Mount, right? 35 mm -hmm. acre property, basically. Mm -hmm. But Jesus um, was laid in Golgotha, or the skull, which is actually in the summit of the mountain above them. He was the Passover, the high Passover. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I had something else I want to mention really quick about so the scourging. So, um, before I read, did, did we mention uh, sweat and other drops of blood? Where did that come in at? And so as far as the scourging goes, so these leather straps that had lead, glass, sheet bone, things like that in it, 
when you were hit with this thing just once, I want you to picture this. It had lead, all of them had lead and it would cause kind of the whipping action. And, and so you ever seen one of those sticks that the police officers use that have a little metal on the end of it, they, they stretch mm -hmm. out? Mm -hmm. Because yeah, you yeah. have that weight at the very end, that, that whipping action, that, that the lead will literally put a hole on the side of a, a solid plastic table. Mm -hmm. And then they have these hooks all over them and, and glass. And so uh, this thing was designed so that the hooks would tear the skin. I, I told you it's going to be graphic. It was designed mm -hmm. to tear the skin away from the muscle. And, and most of the times it would, it would expose even the inner arteries through the muscle. So you'd have the muscle and the, the arteries mm -hmm. completely shredded. Mm -hmm. It would look like yeah. you know, the tassels on a kid's bicycle. And the Bible even says he wasn't even recognizable to his own mother. Mm. Um, so this is way beyond anything we can imagine. Now, this doesn't count the plucking of the beard, the insults, being kept up all night, hypothermia, um, and then the three-mile walk or whatever it was up the hill to the cross. So you can imagine. Yeah. You can imagine after all that beating, the fact that he's even alive. Mm -hmm. after the public humiliation being stripped down and i want i want to am i jumping ahead to mention the crown or should i just keep reading here i think it's awesome. verse two but yeah verse the next verse. so mm -hmm. before i say the next verse the idea is when it would tear the skin open those slugs or those metal chunks would actually uh you know when you get a blood blister on your finger well this would have created giant he wow. uh blebs hematomas big ones that are tore apart and then you have this giant these by remember big strong roman guards two at a time bam 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 they would have burst so this would have been a horrifically hard scene for any human being to witness let alone go through already mm -hmm. okay now we're not even done with that so people and, and i say this because even the movie the passion people say it's so gross man that didn't touch it Sometimes when you when you actually are brought, it's like trying to explain childbirth, but if you're the person going through it, unless you actually see one or you've experienced one, I'm assuming, you're not going to really grasp the gravity of what, what to expect. And I think mm -hmm. it's easy for us to I think, I think, John, I think they really, I think they had like bloodlust going on though, because they did witness a lot of crucifixion. Fictions. I think they got high off watching Jesus. Some of them. I mean, a lot of them, anyway. Sure, they. Some did. people probably got grossed out, but I think they were kind of. They were liking it. The, they, they were probably. Yeah. It was like a sport. It, it anyway, was. They didn't. It, it was did. very gruesome, very hideous, very heinous. But I think us as readers, we we hear about this. If you notice in this book, it says, "Oh, they scourged him." Verse two, put a crown on him. That yeah. was it. The Gospels, if you notice, Alana pointed this out, that it wasn't written in a biased kind of way. It, it was leaving the Holy Spirit, leaving it up to us for the Holy Spirit to interpret, not to paint a picture, mm. you know, to, mm. to force an imagination in our head. Right. It gives us information here. This verse one, literally, I knew we were going to be on this <clears> a minute. This would have been one of the most horrific <clears> things. <throat> Fiction was the worst form of death that a man, that a human being could go through over burning over you know any of that stuff this would have been a very very horrific sight so you know just exposed arteries everything just hanging out so when it says right here we're going to go to verse two and the soldiers divided a crown that means they twisted a crown of thorns that's a reference to genesis three seventeen. that has to do with the curse excuse me and put it on his head and they put him they put on him a purple robe and said, hail to the king of the Jews, excuse me, hail king of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. We talked about the hot hands, that game. Mm -hmm. um, blind people and take turns punching him and say, hey, you know who did it? Prophet, tell us who did it. So let me explain this crown. So there's, it's, it's generally understood. Um, the plant nowadays, uh, the Middle Eastern plant that, um, trying to have a picture of it here. Uh, it's called a melee. Let me find it here real quick. It's called a euphoria uh, melee plant. Um, 
if there's a sap, so typically in that area, these are like, you know, anywhere from one to three inch long thorns, right? And there's a sap, like a milky sap in there that even if the sun's out and you touch it, it can cause blisters. Uh, getting in your bloodstream can cause, it can cause, literally it can cause you to go blind. It can cause migraines, uh, hallucinations. So keep in mind, they sure. had to use a, yeah. Hold on just a second. Chris, I mean, not Chris, Curtis, Curtis, Curtis. What? <laughs> he just over there, he's passing out, he probably worked hard. You said the milky sap causes blisters, headaches, and what else? It can cause blindness. Blindness. Cause, yeah, you can hallucinate. So it's a very poisonous plant. And, and it's most common. Uh, most people call it the thorn plant. But the most likely plant was the euphoria, euphorbia, mele is what it's called. And that's uh, E-U-P-H-O-R-B-I-A. And that's M-I-L-I-I. -I. Um, it's native for, to Madagascar, but it's considered to be a Middle Eastern plant. Likely, it's flexible, it's twistable. That's why it says platted a crown. It's very pliable. You can move it around. But it can, it can actually um, um, pierce the skull when it's dried out mm. very severely. And so imagine, after everything else, they put this crown on his head. You know, they're, they're mocking him as a king. And so you got to figure, who knows, well over two to 300 lesions all over his head. And you know what it's like to have a, just a little baby cut on your head. It bleeds terribly. Or has anybody had a sunburn, had their head shaved, had a sunburn, Danny? <laughs> right. Do, yeah. I mean, you have this. And that burn it's, going it's, on down the line. It's severe. It's severe. It's painful. Imagine having <clears throat> this very painful to touch plant pierced all over your head. Mm -hmm. Probably in Got your that eyes. Baby skin up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this is this is important to remember for all you men here. Plucking one mustache hair out. Anybody remember what that feels like? Ooh. Yeah. Yep. It's not like a leg hair. You get a chunk of meat come out. Mm -hmm. Volume here. Whatever. Um, I'm not trying to bore you guys, but I just really this the visual. A lot of times you don't hear about this. So he's boring, having this. Man. Yeah, yeah. Good. You're so, so the scourging happens. It says the soldiers platted a crown. They twisted. They formed a crown and put it on his head. Crown of thorns. And that's obviously there's a reference here too to uh, Genesis 22. Remember when Abraham Abram was told to take his son Isaac up on yep. the mountain his yep. son and his son this is the first reference to love the law first mentioned there was a ram caught in a thicket thicket well, yep isn't it interesting that the ram got its head caught in a thorn oh. mm -hmm. yep in the same exact place on the same mountain two thousand years prior there's a picture mm -hmm. there yep but instead of us, what's that that's awesome I said yeah, that's yeah, awesome I mean, yeah. So this this is a judgment type of thing. Um, the thorn, it's it's pointing to a lot of things. This is them saying, oh, hail to the king, king, you know, Jesus. They're making fun of him. They're mocking him. So he's been beaten. His hair has been plucked out. Can't even imagine how that feels. And he's bled. Who knows how much blood? I'm surprised there's any blood left in his body. Mm -hmm. And so. Hey, John. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was just going to add, man to what you said about the ram getting caught in the thicket because God said to Abraham that he would provide a sacrifice, you know, and he did provide the sacrifice through Jesus. And I remember, mm -hmm. I'm glad you said that you brought it to remembrance. I mean, I think I might've even forgot a little bit about it, but he James said he would provide about him. that. He said he'd provide himself, not for himself. Yeah. Himself. By himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. That's almost like he said, I'm going to provide myself. In other words, I'm going to give you myself. That's interesting. And I love the fact that the first mention of love in Genesis 22, I say all the time, is pointing to the cross. 
So we see it in the Old Testament, but the first reference of love is yeah. pointing to exactly what Jesus did for us, not what we did for him. Mm -hmm. So, and these are key, and I knew I was going to invest time on this. So they put these thorns on his head, and they put on a purple robe. And the robe, uh, like I told you, from the Antonia Fortress, the soldiers, the Roman soldiers, they would have wore the purple robes. Another note, purple meant royalty, the book of Matthew, the symbol of the lion that was royalty. They had this mm -hmm. shellfish. Um, I made a note of it. I don't know where, where it is, but there's a shellfish that's crushed up. And the color of the shellfish would, you know, be in this old material they used. So the robe would have been a purple or a red. And so after all these scourgings, anybody got a real severe wound and get gauze in it and they rip it off? After about a half an hour, tear it off. How about do that all day for a few hours? What's that? Mm. Oh, I said, I am yeah. intimately aware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So after all this stuff happened to Jesus, and in a way, we can't even imagine how bad his body, backs of the legs, the armpits, side of the face, the neck, the genitalia, the feet, the ankles. I want you to really... Not that you have him. I want you to really process this. He's got this, this robe on him that's drying and moving, constantly being pushed and spit on, walks off however many meters it was, up a hill. And this thing is drying. It's, it, you know, it's sun out, drying, tearing loose, drying, tearing loose. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. He hasn't eaten. He hasn't drank. He's been humiliated. He has this robe. It's not even his. His grave is not even his, it's borrowed. So, so they put this uh, purple robe on him um, and they, they hit him with their hands. It's described better in other gospels, a lot more in depth right there. Verse four says, Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto him, behold, I bring him forth to you. Okay, this word behold right here in the Latin's eshe homo or homo. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That means, uh, excuse me. I got that wrong. Let me keep reading. I had that wrong. Verse five says, then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe and Pilate said unto them, behold the man. Uh, the, the letters E-S-H-E, -E, homo, means behold the man. He says, I bring him forth to you. In other words, he's making a presentation to satisfy them, mm -hmm. but he's not really one to kill him. Right. Yeah. Right? He's saying, hey, here's the man. This is what you wanted. You're happy. Cool. Let's scourge him. We don't need to kill him. But I'm going to try to satisfy them so they don't go to Caesar. And my wife's not mad at me and I don't kill the son of God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's trying to. He's trying to. John. Yes, sir. I'm just trying to see what verse were we on? Verse, verse were we on? Five. Verse five. five. Four and five. Verse five. Okay. Because he says that I find no fault in him. Verse mm -hmm. 5 says, then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns. Jesus came forth with the purple robe, and Pilate said to him, behold the man. Pilate's trying to appease them. Okay. So as you read on here, um, and behold Pilate said it. Also is behold the son of man. God, I mean, maybe that was him announcing the fact that he was putting a check mark on, you know, that he believed he was God. And this is what started the next, this, you're exactly right. And that is what stirred everybody up. Mm. That statement. You're exactly <clears throat> right. You? I think that's a, true. When the chief priests, therefore, officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him. I find, in other words, you do it. He washed his hands. I find no fault in this in him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Verse seven says, The Jews answered him, and there's a reference to this in Leviticus 24, by the way. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law, he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. Okay. Do you guys, the statement that was made uh, back in, hold on. 
the man. Hold mm-hmm. on a minute. Let me find this real quick. Um, oh, yeah. He made himself the son of God. That is a term of deity. It claims to be God, like, like we talked about last week. Mm-hmm. That, that established saying that he's the son of God. Right. Uh, that's, what, that's what started this. I'll, I'll leave that at that for now. Um, verse 8 says, when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was more afraid. Because, imagine I said he was a Greek gods and all that, right? He, so very superstitious. He already heard from his wife. And to hear that he's the son of God, he was like, what'd you say? He was, imagine how freaked out Pilate was. I mean, he wouldn't have freaking out. Um, and verse 9 says and went again into the judgment hall this is where he met with Pilate the first time and saith unto Jesus where, where whence art thou where are you from where's your origin what's your source that's what it actually means Pilate's asking where are you from but in the Greek it's referring to your origin or your source but Jesus gave him no answer because Pilate was asking where are you from naturally mm-hmm. follow me Mm-hmm. But in the Greek, this is talking about his actual origin. He wouldn't have understood it. I said, George, Verse 10 said. says, Then said Pilate unto him, Speaketh thou not unto me? In other words, you're not going to, you're not going to, I just talked to you, you're not going to respond to me? And this, this is powerful what's coming up next. I spoke to you, you better say something back. Mm-hmm. Knowest thou not that I have the power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? If I talk to you, you're not going to say anything back knowing I control your fate. And this is, this, me and Alana Alana and I were looking at this. Romans 13, 7. Uh, If somebody could read Romans 13, 7 out loud, I want to read that real quick. Anybody? I got it. Okay. Romans 13, 7, and the word of the Lord reads. Render, therefore, to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Okay. Do you have, um, what do you have here? Which which verse is that, Zach? 13, 7, right? Of Romans? Yeah, what version are you reading out of? King James Version. King James? Okay. I got the so, uh, this living Bible paraphrase right here too. I would like to see what that says. If y'all you can do that. That'd be no, go ahead. Cool. I mean, I, I'm just kind of compare them, see what it says. I've never seen that one in the living Bible paraphrase. 13 one. I want to read too as well. If you could read that one out of the King James. Okay. And I'll, and I'll get to what I want to show you. here. While he's turning to that, I can read it in the King James. I beseech you. No, you're in 13. <laughs> 13. Yeah, Romans 13, verse okay. 1. Read that real quick. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that are ordained of God. Okay. Anytime, here, here's the point. Does God allow things to happen? Yes, he does. Does, does God also orchestrate things that we wouldn't think he would to happen. Yes, mm-hmm. even our current president, you may or may not like him. That's irrelevant. I'm not going to get into politics. Mm-hmm. But sometimes he puts someone in power, even though they're not good. Oh, no, he does. And he does, yeah, because he has a good plan somehow with it. Yeah. That mm-hmm. may not be the way we understand it, but he actually, God actually puts it in scripture that we are to honor our leaders as hard as that may be and trust him and pray for them because if they're in this is really key right here verse 11 12 if they are in office just like Pilate, mm-hmm. he put them there i'm not saying he necessarily endorses all their decisions yeah. he put them there it's not an accident for a plan and purpose. for a plan later right. see what i'm saying and he makes us known in scripture romans 13 1 13 7 so he says then saith, I'm going to read again. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? I read that. I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee. Jesus answered, 
Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given from thee from above. Above. Mm -hmm. You have exactly the power you were given and no mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. Pilate did not like that. And he says, therefore, he that delivered me unto thee, you, hath the greater, greater sin. sin. I think he was trying, he was reassuring Pilate is how I took that. that, that exactly. That they. That because Pilate's wanting to wash his hands and not be held accountable. He was appointed to that, but they weren't when they however, offered him up. However, he wasn't a strong enough man to stand up against the crowd. Right. But Jesus yeah. is re reassuring him that, listen, you're going to do what you're, you know, God's already put you in power to do what you're so going to do. you're here it's, now. It's. it's part of god's plan this is not your sin the sin rests on the jewish leaders well, that's good can i add to that yeah here's the point look god's placed you in this position i already know your dilemma i don't need you to defend me because you're placed where you were placed you have a job to do mm -hmm. you can take it this way mm -hmm. let god handle them come on because he says um he says um Therefore, he that delivered me, in other words, the Jews, mm -hmm. unto you, they have the greater sin. Don't, they have don't, the greater don't, be, sin. don't yeah. be concerned what's happening with, with them. Mm -hmm. you're, you're in this position. Now that you're here, you're going to do what you're supposed to do because God put you there. It doesn't mean he has to be a jerk or um, um, perpetuate it. You've mm -hmm. done what you can. Do you agree? I mean, he's he's basically spoken three different times to try to release him, but let God handle it. He's basically saying that he, yeah, well, it's part of God's plan to begin with for how he was supposed to die. And so God already foreknew this ahead of time, but he's reassuring Pilate that in a sense that, hey, it's the Jewish leaders that are going to be held accountable because they're the ones that are ultimately, he's kind of having to follow after he doesn't have to but he's he's choosing to appease them rather than do what's right and have they're going to be held accountable yeah that's the part he's just saying that jesus is want to mention something he's not going to blame it. it about to get off that there's actually uh i think there's really seven types of crowns but there's two major types of crowns remember in verse two we mentioned the crown was platted on his head mm -hmm. that word for crown there is stephanos and in the Greek, when you see the soldiers plaiting or putting the, the twisting the crown on his head, that has to do with royalty, with earthly. Look, remember what I said the word Wicca is? It comes from the, the word wicker. It means to twisted. twist. Mm -hmm. They put a twisted royal crown on him, a worldly. In other words, think about that. Twisted royalty, not true royal, not, not sovereign, not holy royalty mm -hmm. they put a stephanos mm -hmm. on him but the other form of um a crown is called a diadema that's a reference of revelation 19 verse 12 does somebody want to read that mm -hmm. there's all that's, kinds of them but i thought i would reference the one where jesus comes what back verse she said we can't hear you hold on 1912 no. can't hear you guys i don't know why Testing one two, uh, testing. Can you hear Hold me? On, I can't hear you guys. I can hear you, Where Zach. Okay. They have an audio issues. Well, one second, guys. I can't hear you at all. It says down right there. Oh. Hello, 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 hello. Hold hello. on one second, guys. Sorry. Okay. He didn't hear that either. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it. I heard it loud and clear as that. <laughs> I cannot hear my sound went out. Oh, you tap back there, held it. Cur Curtis, guys, can you, sorry about that. Curtis, can you guys hear? Curtis, yes. Yeah, we hear. Uh, yeah, okay. What? Okay. Y'all sleeping? <laughs> Got it now. No, well, just me. The water. Some of the back of my computer. I like I was underwater there. Uh, oh. uh, it was Revelation. Yes, what? you said oh. Revelation nineteen twelve. Yes. Read that. Somebody read that. You want to read it, Lana? Okay. His eyes were 
as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself okay that type of crown references something that has a uh, um jewels inside mm -hmm. that has to do with um i wrote another note here uh incorruptible holy so a mm -hmm. diadema is an incorruptible never ending only one one of a kind it's full of jewels it's the one that can't be destroyed it never goes away stephanos is the one that men give men oh, okay they don't matter mm. so the first one was the incorrect i mean the the one that you can't destroy which one was that called think about, think about a diamond diamonds are good so diadema, mm -hmm. diadema. stephanos uh think of all I think of is one Stefani when I say that. <laughs> Stefano. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> a worldly crown. I mean, think about somebody in the world and I don't know, di di diadema. And Diade diademes. Diademes. Think diamond. Think good. Diadema, yeah. that's the crown that he wears, the many crowns. We come in with one crown, but he's wearing many crowns. In other words, he's uh, the king of kings. Yep. I want to mm -hmm. point that out. Going back to verse. Um, seven uh hold on. no verse six is that right well we just got done talking about we were at uh 11 yeah, yeah here we go jesus yeah. yeah you could have no power unless it was given to you from above mm -hmm. um romans 13 1 i give you a note on that romans 13 7 um he claimed to be equal with god verse 12 and and from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him because he had conviction, obviously. But mm -hmm. Jesus cried out saying, if thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend, which is interesting because they hated Caesar. Mm -hmm. They just knew that Pilate was already in trouble with Caesar and Pilate's like, oh, now what do I do? So just like um, the last time he got nervous when he went on that, the story, the three reasons I told you that he was having problems with Caesar. Um, when they they came back, um, I forgot to tell you guys. Um, he basically released them on the the one of the three reasons that, that Caesar was mad. He actually let the people go, but they still went to Caesar anyway. I didn't tell them that. But um, I'm trying to my train of thought. I lost my train of thought. Anyway, they said thou art not Caesar's friend, and that freaked him out. He knew better than that, so. If you speak against Caesar, verse 13, when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat, same place, in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, it's called Gabbatha. Um, uh, let's see here. Here's where I wrote down the stuff about Caesar, the images and all that. Uh, so basically, yeah, it's just a, it's a judgment. Um, I just made a note that that's a judgment seat, basically. And it was the preparation of the Passover about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, behold, your king. But they cried out, away with you, away with him, crucify him. So Jewish calendar, they use, uh, their day starts at, um, I believe, 6 p.m. Is that correct? So the sixth hour is 6 a.m. Or excuse me, it's noontime under the Jewish calendar. Because their day, yeah. Yeah, it's noon. the first hour, 6 a.m. to 7 yeah all the way up to 12 and then it's the first watch second watch third watch but under the roman calendar it's uh it's noon time that's our calendar mm -hmm. right so there's two different calendars here john was writing for a hebrew calendar a jewish calendar so it had been 6 a.m it would have been noon um it says when they cried out away with him away with him crucify him let's see I got all the stuff i want to mention but Okay. So what do you think the significance of him saying, behold the man, behold the king, king. the next time? Mm. But do you think mm. really he was just calling him a man the first time? And then after he spoke with Jesus in the back, then he realized he actually was God. And then he come out and said the king, or is there any? 
I watched a little video about this. There was some significance. I think he was saying, look, this is what you wanted. Well, whole mm -hmm. demand, like a proclamation. Um, mm -hmm. I watched the video about it. I can't remember what he said about that. Do you get anything about that? A whole demand? I have, I literally have all these notes, but for some reason, when I got here, I have notes about that too, and I, I can't. Um, well, you can always, you know, just bring that to the next one. Yeah. I'm trying to see here. Thing that you miss. Let me see here real quick. I, I, I think, uh, I mean, and this is just my interpretation. Mm -hmm. When he said, behold, your, your king, now he's more or less saying, you know, he, he's, tying, he's tying Jesus to, to the Jews. He's connecting them oh, to the Jews. Oh, yeah, your man. Behold, your man. Okay, here's yeah. your... You know. Here's your king. I think yeah. it was sarcastic, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah probably. Of, hey, look, here's your king. Yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah. 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 Yep. You're probably right. So, something that, that I read here, it says... When it says, behold the man, Pilate invited the crowd to look at this suffering one and to look with careful consideration. Behold, there is a sense mm -hmm. in which Pilate spoke for God here who invites all humanity to behold the man, to see the man of men, the perfect man, the tested and approved ideal of all humanity. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Uh-oh. There's uh -oh. the screen. Oh, you sharing it? Oh, okay, you sharing it? Okay. Oh, wow. Just want to give you this is a very. Um, we're actually making one of these pretty accurate to this picture. Um, but this is generally what a scourging tool would look like predominantly. If you look at most descriptions, they're similar to this. Oh, okay. Looks, looks wicked. It does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's. Mm -hmm. um, looks like a meat tenderizer. <laughs> <laughs> yep exactly yeah tenderizing the ox the olive <laughs> yeah it's pretty nasty i just want to show you guys that yeah i have a few notes i want to mention um tonight i don't want to go too far into some i have some stuff i want to mention i mentioned fusigatio flagellat uh flag flag mm -hmm. and radio. i mentioned that um, let's see here. Let's read verse 15. Can read it? Huh? Can I read it? Yep, verse 15. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Ooh. Yeah, and so I was, we were talking about, um, which is interesting because right here, um here they are calling um we have no king but caesar we made a note that um their king caesar will order titus in 70 a.d to destroy the temple city here he is like that wasn't it five years later hmm? wasn't it five years later five years later yeah so five years after they're saying this oh they're saying oh we have no king but caesar even though they hate caesar but five years later he orders Caesar, what, what happened? Caesar, well, five years later, Caesar, Caesar will actually be. Um, oh, he ends up murdering a hundred and no. They'll order Titus. 1.5 million Jews, and it's they and destroy the temple. He'll order Titus in 70 AD to That's do right. that. Same guy they're defending is going to order Titus in 70 AD, which will be a future leader, to destroy the temple and over 1.5 million Jews. This whole Caesar guy they're defending, don't, you know, be honorable to your Caesar, even though they hate him, is going to kill all your people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's a sellout. And so um, that's why it says, we have no king but Caesar, which is crazy to even say that. Verse 16 says, then delivered he him, therefore unto them to be crucified. He gave in. He did what we do sometimes. Mm -hmm. And they took Jesus and led him away. They didn't push him away. They led him. Um, I want to I want to mention something right here in verse 16 when it says, then delivered he him, therefore unto them to be crucified. Notice he delivered 
free will, he let them do the Christmas. Yeah. Right. yeah. See that? Mm -hmm. There's a reference if you guys pull up Luke. See, it doesn't give you details in the book of John because he didn't focus on that. Luke 23, verse 23 in the KJV. Can somebody read that? This is the, the Luke account of this. Very important. When he says, he delivered him therefore unto them. What was that? Luke 23. 23. 23. I got it. 23, 3? 23, 23. 23, 23. Right there. Okay. You want me to read it? Yep. Let's do it. Luke 23, and the word of the Lord reads. And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. See, that's a more descriptive. Yeah, meaning that he let them choose. Mm -hmm. And remember I talked about, just like with uh, Barabbas, uh, Jesus Barabbas, being Jesus, son of a father, and then Jesus, son of the father. Pilate, in that picture, in that story, if he represented God and the Jews, the, the crowd, the people, you have two, two different human beings, two sons, but he lets free will prevail. Mm -hmm. Pilate washes his hands. That's where that story comes from. We have a God of free will. Pilate, representing that, allows the Jews to decide. And his hands, even though he gave in, his hands aren't necessarily dirty, in a sense. He gave in the way we do, but he didn't choose it. That makes sense. And he says he delivered them. Um, he delivered he, him, therefore, unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus, verse 16, and led him away. Verse 17. And he bearing his cross. Bearing his cross. Typically, in that story, the cross would be the, cro the horizontal piece. And it's called the protibulum. All right. Mm -hmm. and that thing weighed anywhere from 100 to 125, 135 pounds. The cross section as you guys know he fell and peter of um i mean simon uh the other simon not simon peter but uh, yeah mm -hmm. uh, so the cross section is called the protibulum and the center section is called the stapes and it's spelled s-t-i-p-e-s -E the upright part the tree the stick the stat the pole however you want to call it mm -hmm. it says he bearing his cross went forth into a place of the skull so that just says he went forth. It doesn't explain the walk, the the spitting, and you know all the stuff. You get the details in the other gospels. So that they skip, just kind of skipped all here. So imagine after all this has happened, he's dragging this giant, heavy patibulum over his shoulders. Probably the arms are probably tied over the top of it. Um, something like, let me share this real quick. This is a likely, um, trying to get this to share. Let's see here. Expand. Yeah. yeah, let me do this. Oh, but you have to push the share button first. Hold on, guys. Sorry about this. All right. Can you guys see my desktop here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see this? We're not going to go into the crucifixion tonight, but do you see the picture? Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, uh, I'm going to give you just a little tidbit, but this is for next week, but we're not going to go into it. You can grab the stakes. Most of the time, it was typical for a Roman crucifixion. It wasn't just arms like you see in paintings or reading books pegged to the, to the particulum. Often, mm -hmm. they put ropes around it with stakes in the hand. Can you guys see my, my uh, screen? Yes. In Hebrew, yes, I can see. I can see. Okay. In Hebrew, the hand meant the whole section, not just the palm. Because the palm would be very hard, hard pressed to, to hold the weight, but it'd be this section. Typically, there'd be ropes and there'd be uh, stakes put here. Take that picture off because when you're showing, it goes back and forth to people. And you know, no one can see. It does what? So you guys see this? So um, take that down. Make sure you Okay. So again, I'm not going to go into great detail because this is. This is going to be something next week. Um, this is a typical six to nine inch stake. Would have been something like this. 
A lot more bulkier, I think, huh? Probably rough. This is done in a machine shop, so probably it was a lot more archaic, but this is the general, uh, according to, to research that I've done, it would seem way more likely mm. that it's in this area right here. Mm. And we're going to get into that uh, next week. There's some cartilage. There's some different things going on. I don't, should I even go into this at all? Or no. just... No, we're almost there. So I have a question real We're quick. Right. You know, at the very beginning, you were talking about um, this, the scourging or scourge or whatever mm -hmm. versus the, the crucifixion. How many went straight from, or is there any like an idea? Is it, was it normal for them to go straight from the, scourge to the cross or was there a time frame usually between no so that's a good question so the scourging wasn't always for death mm -hmm. now, most times this would drag out a long period of time people would be left on the cross for days okay as we know jesus bled that was over his legs weren't broken but they normally break the legs to speed it up to speed it up um scourging a lot of times was an event by itself. The heavy scourging was kind of reserved for the crucifixion to follow for the capital offenses. Mm -hmm. Scourging was mm -hmm. often done just by itself. Mm -hmm. It was a really common, it was a very, you know, our version of scourging is a speeding ticket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was a very gruesome, you know, the Romans loved it, man. They, the, the lictors, their passion was violence. And then if you get to this, the Syrians or Persians, it was way worse. But um, what? Mm -hmm. but no, scourging was meant to get your attention. And if you're in trouble, if you're for a capital offense, like the third level, the scourging was designed to get you to come clean so they could get information out of you before you died. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, was, there, was there a time between, like... Were they usually wait three days before or did they always go straight to the cross? Well, usually people wouldn't make it to the cross. They'd be dead after the right. scourging. If they were, if it was scheduled for them to die that way, the Romans were mm -hmm. already, would have already done their job at the scourging pole. Mm -hmm. um, and basically imagine a really wide telephone pole about, you know, yay big mm -hmm. enough, tall enough, seven feet tall, six, seven feet, just enough to, to hook somebody's arms or wrist to a strap or something you know, like a flagrum type of strap, holding them up where they're kind of doing this, where they can just on their tippy toes. Because when you're on your tippy toes, you can't move out of the way. You're just, you're just vulnerable. And by the time they were done, the amount of blood loss you would have after a scourging, even a, a, the second level, you probably wouldn't live through the night. You'd probably bleed to death. Mm -hmm. Did they always scourge you before the cross? From what I've researched, uh, scourging was kind of the preliminary thing for any Roman crime, right? They do quartering and things like that. But I think um, from what I've read, it was very common. Okay. Was that, was that what you read from it? Not always, but it was very common. But there's other forms of um, punishment, but the most popular form to make if somebody was a real bad criminal, they loved crucifixion because it was so public. It was so gruesome. It was so embarrassing and humiliating. And it took what, what was what was terrible about it is we'll talk about this next week. I'm just going to mention this one thing because when you're on that cross, we're not going to talk about it, but you'd be in a position to where you're I'm not going to go into it, but where your knees are bent, not all the way where you can hold yourself, but at, at a weird angle where you can't get comfortable, they're just partially bent. So you yeah. can't really ever push up or, it's just an awkward position. So you can never get, just like scourging, they made it that way. They took, they actually took what the Persians invented and they, they put their own twist on it. Mm. Perfected they it. perfected it. Mm. And so they, they even, they even through history, they even, they, 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 it used to be, there was like a little foot, like a, like a place where you'd set your behind on the, on the cross itself. Mm -hmm. right this is from what i've read just so they could kind of get you in place but the romans see a lot of people are told that it's your feet are like this but history shows that that it's on both sides and i think there's a reason we'll get into next week um because the pain level 
is entirely worse if the feet are put beside the tree and not mm. in front of each other. Hey, John. Yeah. And well, that's next week, though. Practice, John. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, man, I just want to add on there. It's just a little bitty. But yeah, they did that because they were like making an example of everybody that was a criminal like that because they did not want crime in Rome. They were like, if you want to do crime in Rome, this is what's going to happen to you. And we are in authority. You're not. We're the criminals, basically. They're pretty much criminals themselves. And if you want to be a criminal, we're going to we're going to just like uh, make an example out of you. So they did. And they were so bad. They were so bad. They were so good at it. Think about Matthew being a tax collector. If you understand in that time, tax collection was like the main reason your life was hard. Mm. And the fact that Jews, remember I said they'd rather have their throat cut than, than give up their law. They don't care. They're, that mm -hmm. Pilate was just blown away by the fact that um, um, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, change the rule they wouldn't they would just they were so strict and um i had i had a reason for saying that um what was i gonna say i don't know hold on um no, I can finish your sentence. no no this was good the fact that they were willing to die for their belief was baffling yeah to him and so i was going to mention something about the jewish custom oh this was good too um Jewish question of what? I hate that. Oh, with Matthew. Matthew, with Matthew. With Matthew. If you think about tax collectors, when you hear, oh, yeah, they hated tax collectors, when you understand the gravity, a tax collector was like equal to a child molester wow. in their minds. Yeah, it was in their minds, it was equal to somebody murdering their children. It was like mm. you were Satan. If you were going to go against your own people, you were a traitor and insurrection. Like, think about this. When, when Matthew sat with Jesus, they're like, what? Jesus, mm -hmm. you sat with a tax collector. They didn't want to pay the Roman people. They're already under rule and authority without their own free will. And they had right. to give all the money to the Romans. So the fact that the Jews, because they're so loyal, they, they refused to pay their taxes easily to the Romans. So they had to recruit some Jewish people that were like more or less willing to sell out the Jews in order to get their tax. So Matthew may need to make a living. It wasn't that he was a traitor. If you watch the chosen, it's that he was just trying to earn a living. And so that's why Matthew is so hated by like Peter and the guys, right? Mm -hmm. He was trying to make a living, but otherwise the Romans wouldn't get their tax money half of the time because Jewish people were so stubborn. They couldn't stand being under the thumb of the Romans because they were just kind of always there. Just like nowadays, mm -hmm. if you go to Middle Eastern countries, or we're not used to it here in the U.S., but you go to a McDonald's, there's a guard outside. They're kind of they're kind of always in the shadows, right? Mm -hmm. And when you hear about Annas or Ananias, when I talked about Caiaphas and Ananias, um, Ananias was kind of like a guy who was always there in the background. He'd kind of just keep an eye on what's going on. He's kind of in the, the silent background. He was the guy over Caiaphas, but... He kind of just stood in the back like the bouncer in the corner over the money changers. And, you know, they had a hierarchy in place. So there was always mm -hmm. somebody over the Jewish people. They were tired of being under persecution. That's why we'll learn next time when Jesus is on the cross and he says, Ale, Ale, Lama Sabachthani. They heard from the last book of Malachi in the Old Testament that they were waiting for their Lord to show up, right? Uh -huh. they, they thought that when Elijah comes back, that would usher in the year of their Lord. Their Lord's coming. Mm -hmm. so we're going to talk about it in, in detail, I promise. We'll have a lot to talk about. Now, even at a Jewish Passover, they'll leave an empty chair expecting Elijah to show up. That means mm -hmm. they thought Jesus was pronouncing that Elijah's coming. Mm -hmm. They didn't realize he is the one they're waiting on. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, yeah, yeah, we need a, you know, a couple more verses I'm going to read and we're done. Um, so, yeah, it says, and he bearing his cross went forth in a place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. Uh -huh. Now, this is an interesting fact for note takers. Um, Golgotha is a Hebrew word uh, for the skull, right? That's Hebrew. 
The Greek word for Golga, uh, for um, Golgotha is cranion, K-R-A-N-I-O-N, cranion. It's the base of the skull, okay? Mm -hmm. If you go there right now on the mountain, it looks like a skull. It looks just like one right outside the, 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 the grape, the vineyard. How do you spell cranion? K-R-A-N-I-O-N. This is interesting. Side note, in case I don't forget, want to forget this. When you say you're in excruciating pain, that's the English word for the word crucifixion. Where we mm. get that word, excruciating. Oh, okay. yeah. Little side note. Interesting. So Golgotha comes from a Greek word, cranion, which is the base of the skull. The Latin equivalent of both of them is called calvarium. Calvarium. And in the King James Bible, you get this word that you see nowhere else that he died on the Mount of what? Calvary. Calvary, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that word Calvary comes from the word Calvarium, which is the combination of the Latin word cranion or Golgotha. <laughs> so Calvary comes from those two combined words of Latin, Calvary. And you see it only in the King James Bible. So the word Cal Calvary, what, what was the word? Calvarium. Calvarium. How do you spell it? C-A-L-V-A-R-I-U-M. Uh, uh, and that is the combination of the Greek word cranion and then Golgotha. They call it Calvary, Calvary's Mountain, the place of the skull, Golgotha. Um, which I think when you hear people say the KJV, it's archaic. Yet they all say Calvary, and that word comes from a King James Bible. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. yeah. See if you can find it in a different Bible, you won't. Not that I know mm. of. Mm -hmm. If I'm wrong, correct me on that, but I don't think so. Um, yeah, verse 18, where they crucify him and two other with him. We've talked about that. You can read other resources about their names, uh, but we're not going to go into that. Um, well, next week, we'll talk about that. And in either side, one, Jesus in the midst, which means the center. The person in the middle is considered the worst, by the way. Um, I'm going to read these last two verses and say something. Verse 19, and Pilate wrote a title and put on it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth in all capital. The king of the Jews. Why would Pilate write? I'll keep reading. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. Verse 20. This title then read many of the Jews. So they read this title for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, close to the city. Remember I said it's just above the temple on the apex of the mountain. Remember? They're passing over and he's in the apex of the mountain above them. For the place where Jesus is crucified was close to the city. And it was written in Hebrew. Notice the order. Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Now, the, the, the ceremonial language of uh, Aramaic is Hebrew. All right? Mm -hmm. Greek, that's Roman. Latin is obviously. So I made a note here. Jerusalem was a multilingual, multicultural area. They had Galileans up north, Judeans down south. They hated each other. The Jews spoke Hebrew as a religious language. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Greeks were worldly, the education, culture. They're very, the, the Greek language is very specific. They don't have more, like one word means that word. It doesn't have dual meanings like Hebrew and English and all that. Mm -hmm. And Latin is the Roman law. That's the order. That's their, the soldiers, right? So God puts three languages on the cross. It's almost like he wanted every type of person to be able to read it. Mm. King of the Jews. And think about this. Pilate, okay, Pilate allowed the crucifixion, but hey, Pilate, why'd you have to add that part about king of the Jews? You can write in your three languages, and you're going to find out next week. It's possible when you see the cross image like this, because normally it was like this most of the time. Sometimes you see it like this. It's possible. Right. A little sign he put on top is what gave that effect mm -hmm. that's next week 
But um, but yeah, I think Jesus, as, as good as he is, that also lets you know Pilate spoke all three languages. He wanted all yeah. ethnic groups to hear who he is. Yeah. So um, verse 21, then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, this is the leaders, write not the king of the Jews, but then he said, I am king of the Jews. Don't write he's the king of the Jews. Crucify him, but don't, why'd you write that? In verse 22, mm -hmm. love this, the last verse for tonight. Pilate answered. Uh, notice they didn't ask a question, but Pilate answered. What I have written, I have written. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Pilate put his foot down. <laughs> this is the part I like. What I have written, remember Jesus said, look, basically in scripture, God put the leaders in charge. Yep. The Jews are already in worse judgment than you. You're just doing what you were going to do. But you wrote who I am and you wrote it to everybody in all three dialects. And at least you stood by. You fa he failed. He got nervous. He got scared. But what is written is written. He still wrote it down on their hearts. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pilot still For the put, history books. <laughs> yep. He did the same thing Peter did. He got scared. Yeah. So, so what's interesting about this, we're done with the verses. Man, okay. I'm not going to go into it next week. We're going to talk about the seven markings and all that, but I'm not going to go into that. Um, hey, John. Yes, sir. Something popped in my mind, man, whenever uh, when we just went over verse 22. Mm -hmm. Whenever he said, I have written, I have written. Jesus says, as it is written. <laughs> mm -hmm. As it is written, right? So there you go. Written. As it all together. It does. I'm going to wrap this up. I know next week we're going to talk about that sour wine, about what happened on the cross, about what he said, the seven statements, the three ways he was judged as a prophet, priest, and a king. We're going to talk about what he said, who he was speaking to, and we're going to find out when he said blood and water came out, why did he mm -hmm. say that? And where did blood begin and where did it end? Sin entered mm -hmm. in, in my opinion. He was, we were wrapped in glory in the garden. Then all of a sudden, we had sinful flesh. And where's the life of the blood? In the flesh. So flesh. sin entered in and blood entered in. Remember, mm -hmm. we're covered in the blood and we're covered in the water? Yeah. Two, two types of baptism. Yep. One was the promise with Abraham. Mm -hmm. We're going to learn more about that next week. Mm -hmm. So um, all mm -hmm. else I want to mention was... I can't mention that's next week. Hold on. Oh my, I can't wait till next week, guys. Um, <laughs> I ain't gonna write. Hold on, hold on. I'm almost done here. Come on, now. I can't talk about that either. <laughs> okay, hold up. I'm gonna learn from my wife. She teaches me how to keep myself under control. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> I got all kinds of pictures to show you next week. That's my favorite week for Bible studies next week. The last half of John chapter 19. Um, you say it every week. Yeah, but I'm telling you, man. Uh, let me look one more thing. Okay, I can't even talk about him being stripped of the Can't do that. I think you get praise out. I know I'm just, I was listening to Pastor James, you know, and he brings in some of the things we've talked about in his messages. I know he did this last Sunday. So I was like, we went through that mom study. I know what that means. I know what that is. That's awesome. Well, what I'm going to learn, I'm going to take the advice from the pastor. From a, I'm telling you, I got some stuff ready for next week. Uh oh, all y'all better be here next week, man. Oh, okay. oh yeah. I got a praise you. report. Oh, what is it? I'm going back to Africa. Whoop whoop! Yeah. I'm going back to Africa. I'm planning for probably possibly February the third, flying out, so I can make it there for the fifth. So I can get there right on my birthday. February awesome. 5th is my birthday. Okay. And I'm going to stay till uh, 
April the 27th or 26th, something after the 21st, because April the 21st is her birthday. I've got over a thousand right now. So I'm going to get the airplane ticket, round trip ticket. I need about maybe, maybe 500 more, you know, 500 mm. more dollars, something like that. 600 maybe, but uh, I'm going to be able to get that up and um, try to try to go on over there, man. Uh, yeah. you'll, be gone. you'll be gone for a couple months then. Mm -hmm. A few months. Yeah. yeah. Good, good. Yeah. We yeah. got the internet. <laughs> he may not have in it what he said, though. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's that's awesome. Great. It's gonna be great. Well, I hope uh, you all enjoyed the night. I was things, <laughs> but I ain't gonna do it. No, because they all need to go on with the yes. night. And Nancy to pray us out. You only got like ten percent of what I had ready, man. Okay. All right, let's do this. Father, thank you for tonight's message. Thank you for being present with us, Father. We just ask that you keep everybody safe tonight. Be the forerunner and the rear guard. You'll thank guard you, our hearts and our minds and all the people in this group, uh, Father. But most importantly, um, just allow us to spread your word and share the gospel. Wherever we go, yes. wherever we set our feet, that we make it fertile ground, the type of Holy. seed that receives and it grows. Father, and I thank you for my uh, wonderful women and men of God friends in our group. Just ask that you bless them and just show them your favor. We ask all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. Y'all keep it uplifted in prayer also. I had a good friend of mine die, a family friend. Her name is Barbara, Barbara McKinley. Uh, McKinney. Barbara McKinney. And... Um, Man, we've been knowing her for a long time since I was like 12, 13 years old, even. And um, mm -hmm. it's been a long time. So, wow. Keep their family uplifted in prayer. I know uh, their family is kind of going through it right now. It just happened, um, it happened yesterday. So, oh, wow. So, yeah, just keep that uplifted in prayer, too. Okay. And the journey ahead of me as well. Yeah. Okay. Nah. Gotcha. All right. Well, I got a little confused, I got, but thank you for joining us and for sticking it out, Kurt. I hope you got some good rest while you're here. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, did, 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 I got did, notes. I got notes. That's cool. Hey, I want to sleep to the words. Good. I do it all the time. Did, did, hey, did Haley sign on? Somebody said Haley was signing on. Did she she sign did, on? but she got back off. Oh. Yeah, she's had some internet issues and work conflicts, so I don't know if she was listening. Mm -hmm. no, she was probably yeah. listening. She might have got on Facebook Live. Yeah, you know, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's some people on there. I don't know who's on there right now. But anyway, uh, you guys, um, thanks for being here. Love you guys very much, and hope to see everybody here next Tuesday at six thirty. Can't wait to see All you. Right. <laughs> I'm living color. Let me see that ring. Let me see that ring. Let me see it up close. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Bling, bling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He did good. Hey, Curtis. Yeah. Proud right. of you. Bro. Proud of you, man. My brother. Thank you. Love you, man. You're marrying up, dude. You're marrying up, just like I did. I'm telling you. All right. Love I've you guys. I've been on the train. Curtis need all the help he can get. <laughs> oh, love you guys. Love you. Hey, we're leaving. We're leaving. I got to show you a little clip. I'm not. Look, look right here. You see this? Hold on. See this right here. Oh oh, you just need your hand away. Hold on. Get your, get your okay. hand on. You see okay. that? Yeah. 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 That is the set to our show that's coming up. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Shake that's them awesome. Up. Yeah, we built it. Oh, did you? Okay. Cool. Okay. Biblical marriage. Biblical marriage. All right. Okay. 
Well, we, right. we're ready to get into it because, yeah. <laughs> you know, we got to we got to go through our premarital stuff with you guys. So, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So we'll All right. Yeah. Love you. Love you guys. Love y'all. Bye. 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 Bye.